So welcome to the first video, um, first tutorial video to a series that is going to be pretty lengthy, um, 30 or 40 videos or so, uh, where I'm going to describe virtually everything there is to OpenGL and we're going to uh, maybe create something near the end, something impressive of up team quality. So let's begin, shall we? Um, some preparation notes. I will be using Visual Studio 2010. You can use whatever you want. I have set up this particular um, configuration to include the following libraries since we're going to be using these plus additional libraries will follow. Um, all the libraries that I'm going to be using are platform neutral so they should work on Windows, Linux, OS X, iPhone, Android, you name it. So let's begin, shall we? Uh, we're going to... First I'd like to note that the OpenGL spec does not specify an API in order to create and manipulate Windows. Modern windowing systems that support OpenGL include a subsystem that provides the binding between an OpenGL context and the windowing system. In the X window system, that interface is called GLX. The X windowing inter uh, the X window system you'd find on Linux. Microsoft provides its own called WGL, and Mac OS also has its own called CGL. Working directly with these interfaces in order to create a window in which to display graphics is usually grunt work, which is why we're using a higher level library that abstracts away the fine details. The one we're using here is called the OpenGL Utility Library, or GLUT for short. It provides a simplified API for window management, as well as event handling, I.O. control, and a few other surfaces. In addition, GLUT is, cross, is cross-platform, which makes its portability easier. Alternatives to GLUT you could also use are SDL, GLFW, and SFML. So let's begin, shall we? We're, uh, first thing we'll do is we'll include glut. On Linux this is called freeglut.h. Uh, the first thing we're going to first thing we're going to do um, I'm going to give you a, a quick preface. I'm going to write out commands or statements and then describe what they do afterwards. So for example This call initializes GLUT. The parameters can be provided directly from the command line and include useful options such as sync and GL debug, which disables the uh, synchronous nature of X and automatically checks for GL errors and displays them respectfully. So you can specify sync for X and GL debug at the command line. That's why it takes those two. So here we configure some GLUT options. GLUT double enables double buffering, which is drawing to a background buffer while another buffer is being displayed, and the color buffer where most rendering ends up. Uh, we will usually want these two as well as other options which we will see in later uh, tutorials. So these three calls above specify the window parameters and create it, including the uh, title of the window.
So since we're working with a windowing system, most of its interaction with the running program occurs via event callback functions. GLUT takes care of interacting with the underlying windowing system and provides us with a few callback options. Here we just use one, a main callback, to do all the rendering of one frame. This function is continuously called by GLUT's internal loop. So this is our first encounter with the concept of state in OpenGL. The idea behind state is that rendering is such a complex task that it cannot be treated as a function call that receives a few parameters and correctly designed functions never receive a lot of parameters. You need to specify shaders, buffers, and various flags that affect how rendering will take place. In addition, you would often want to keep the same piece of configuration across several rendering operations. Example, if you never disable the depth test, then there is no point in specifying it for every render call. That is why most of the configuration of rendering operations is done by setting flags and values in the OpenGL state machine. And the rendering calls themselves are usually limited to the few parameters that revolve around the number of vertices to draw and their starting offset. After calling a state changing function, that particular configuration remains intact until the next call to the same function with a different value. The call above sets the color that will be used when clearing the frame buffer. The color has four channels, R, G, B, and A, and it's specified as a normalized value between 0 and 1. So this call passes control to GLUT, which now begins its own internal loop. In this loop, it listens to events from the windowing system and passes them via the callback that we configured. In our case, GLUT will only call the function we registered as a display callback, render underscore callback, to give us a chance to render the fame. frame. Here we need, um, here I'm going to specify some calls. The only thing we do in our render callback function is to clear the frame buffer using the color specified above. The second call tells GLUT to swap the roles of the back buffer and the front buffer. In the next round through the render callback we will render into the current frame's front buffer and the current back buffer will be displayed. Here we set our color, here we're telling it to clear the color and push it to the screen. Let's compile this now, run it, and as you can see we have a window. We have a window, we have our title, and we can close it, manipulate it. And that concludes the first tutorial on OpenGL. Getting a window up, displaying it and registering a render callback.